Good morning. It is a joy to be in the house of the Lord this morning. As we've been praying over you, we've sensed such a desperation and a hunger for the presence of the Lord. And so we're going to gather and worship around the presence of Him. Would you stand? I want to read from Psalm 134 over you. And as I do, I believe that these words are going to go right within you and are going to activate your spirit to worship the Lord this morning. I know that we are a church known for the way that we worship, but today is a fresh day. And so we can come boldly into His presence. And I believe as we do so, there will be an encounter with His presence reserved only for this day. It says, praise the Lord, all you servants of the Lord, who minister by day and night in the house of the Lord. Lift up your hands in the sanctuary and praise the Lord. May the Lord bless you from Zion, for He is the maker of heaven and earth. Have you lifted your hands? Let me read that again as we prepare. Praise the Lord, all you servants of the Lord, who minister by day and night in the house of the Lord. Lift your hands in the sanctuary and praise the Lord. As we begin to worship and our team lead us in worship, Lord, we're here, our hands lifted high, ministering to you. And we ask that here in Dudley would be a place of your presence. We magnify you, Jesus. Begin to put his name on your lips. We magnify you, King Jesus. You are beautiful. You are matchless. There is none like you. We give you all the praise and all the honour. Begin to clap Him. Just begin to lift your voice. You're magnified here. You're glorious, Jesus. You're wonderful. You're magnificent. We praise you, Lord. Amen. Amen.
your glorious day No chains on me, I'm in your glorious day There's no chains on me, I'm standing in your glorious day You know, as we come into our time of worship this morning, I just want to remind you that um, this is the Feast of Sukkot, the Feast of Booths. And that was a time, and I really feel that we can really draw from this today. It was a time when the people of Israel were to return back to their beginnings. It isn't a case of keep moving on but it's to return back to their beginnings and get back to the simplicity and the basics of who they were as a people I do believe that God is calling us back to the basics the simplicity of having his presence because that was the other they would live out in booths because it was the first time when the Shekinah glory would come down amongst God's people. And it was also a time of great joy because they were celebrating God's goodness with his harvest, a harvest that they'd not worked for, a harvest that was already provided for them by others. Remember what Jesus said? That you are reaping where others have sown. And so I do believe that we're in a time of great joy. And I would like to just release that spirit of joy over us Let's get back to our beginning, which was all about God's presence, the joy of our salvation. Let's never lose that, people. It is the most wonderful experience that you've ever had in your life. When you went from darkness to light in a moment, a nanosecond, where you went from the power of Satan and you crossed over to the power of God. You know, that crossing, and I really sense that today God wants to come. They dwelt in booths because His glory would come right amongst them. And I do believe that today we're going to find the Lord moving around us. I believe His glory, the glory of His presence is going to come and move around us. He's going to begin to whisper things and begin to declare things over us. And so as we come this morning, let's come to that place. Let's pitch. Let's pitch our booth. That is, let's open our lives. We don't need to have a tent up here. We are the tent. We are the tent. This is the place where God dwells. It's just, those are just visual aids for us. But God comes to dwell amongst his people. Hallelujah. And so let's come today and celebrate. As we step into this place of Sukkot, where we know what it is for God to join with us as we make our journey through our life. Let him come today. Let this be one of those crossroad points where he meets with us and where he says, this is the way, this is the way to walk in. And so he releases, I believe, prophetic signposts to us. And those signposts are going to give us the ability to move where he is moving for our lives. And that will be different for every one of us. And so let's come today and let's just worship the God 
who says, I will dwell amongst my people. Hallelujah. Come on, let's just raise a shout to him right now. Come on, you can do better than that. Just think of a glory cloud coming down, and it was God's presence coming down. Come on, let's just raise that shout right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, that you found a way to come and dwell with us. Thank you, Lord, that in Jesus you found that way, that He is the way, He is the truth, He is the life, He is the one that we gather under. And so we say to you, Lord Jesus, come today, Lord. Move amongst us, we pray, as we celebrate this time of great joy and celebration in your presence. And all the people said, and they said, and they said, Amen. Come on, let's do it.
Do you see with great joy that you have made the demonic fear you? I just love that. And the Lord says, it is now a time for these leaders to tear down some long-standing demonic principalities who are terrified of you. And I saw this house really at the cutting edge again of what God wanted to do. And it looked like there had been a bit of a journey of a lull. And the Lord says this, into you I will put a fresh apostolic zeal and a level of grace will descend that is heavier for you than anything you have previously had. And the Lord says, the grace that I'm giving you will bring a fresh mantling and a deep ability to see and to strategize ahead of the regular timings of other leaders in the nation. The Lord says this to you, I will give you personally a grace, a couple of things here, a grace to roll out regional plans that shift just not the one or the two, but bring many people into a new unlocking. Now let me get very specific. The long-standing principality that you are about to tear down is poverty. Yes. And it, obviously that is a very layered demon. It is the poverty of fruitfulness. It is the poverty of the presence of God. It is the poverty that is systemic in the ordinary lives of those around here who are not yet saved. But poverty has woven its way in where it looks and feels to me like expectation is a few notches down from what it should. And that is the whispering of poverty. And the Lord says, you have eaten successfully the edges of it over the years. Now I'm commissioning you in fresh zeal for its total downfall. And I saw the rise in this house of a lost entrepreneurial genius that had got up and gone to other nations. And the Lord says, as I bring the missional and the apostolic back to England, he says, will this house go first and receive an entrepreneurial genius that will land on you that you might strategize and also warfare against systemic poverty in the land but also in my house over the shallow waters of my presence. And so the Spirit of the Lord says, you will have two things happen. You will have national favor with government. And then I saw a phone call happening between the leaders here and the mayor of Manchester. And I saw him call and ask for your strategy of how you enacted a death to poverty. Because something of such great fruit is going to come. And I saw from this house a domino effect of city by city adoption of programs that would begin here, of ideas that would flourish here from your apostolic leadership and you were about to be miraculously blessed. So that very much is quite a practical word but also a warfare word that you go in the spirit and you kick out the demon that's scared of you, but you go with the apostolic fresh mantle that is now hanging in the room and you deal with it strategically and with a practical solutions. So that's the spiritual warfare portion and the practical apostolic missional outworking portion. But the Lord then also said this to me. He said, poverty is not just about the fear of lack that opens the door to dim diminishing. He said, poverty also comes from fatherlessness. The orphan is generated, the big, the big demon is fatherlessness, and the orphan then is the, the, the fruit of that. 
But I heard the Lord talk robbed generational blessing in this region and of people who were abandoned by the generational line so that fatherlessness was all that they knew. And then I heard the Lord cross. Huh. This is a bit awkward. Not with you guys, don't worry. And um, uh, In fact, he's really pleased with you lot. But I heard him cross at the ruining in England of the Father Heart message. And I was surprised um, because I thought that was a good find. Not that my own reflection matters much, but I, I thought it was a good foundation under our feet. But the Lord started to say to me, he says, I am sad of the loss in this nation of what should have been this nation's foundation and the mismanagement of that revelation in the, in the nation. So the Lord says this to you, and I'm in trepidation about this. He says, I'm going to give you that peace to steward again in the nation. He says the mantle for fixing fatherlessness was lost and squandered, but I will give it to this house. That is huge. He said, you will know the Father's love and I will help you to put together the identity schools and the practical solutions which will re-woo a generation. You are to decree, says the Lord, Father's encounters into your atmosphere. You are being given the megaphone to steward the national atmosphere that opens the door to the Father's love. You are to decree that the nation can encounter the love of God and you are to model it. And the Lord says, as you start, my weight will shock you in how it comes into this building. The Lord says, I am replacing where it was put on the floor, the mantle to bring the Father's love back to a nation. And the Lord says, you will be called not just the Father heart people or the love of the Father people that was used before. For the Lord says, that has been ruined. The Lord says, you will be called the identity solution bringers. It feels much less wishy-washy than, than anything I've understood of the Father's heart. But you will be called the identity solution bringers. You will be a house strong in the mantle of the Father's love, strong in clarity and revelation, strong in solutions. And the Lord says this, you are going to be a new breed of church that I speak about in Romans. For are you not, says the Lord, now anointed as the leaders of the protected remnant in England? Wow. Very serious, very serious stuff. Psalm 84. How lovely is your dwelling place, Lord God Almighty. My soul yearns, even faints for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. Verse 5. Blessed are those whose strength is in you, whose hearts are set on a pilgrimage. And the Lord says in this house, I am calling the hungry to re-adventure. I am calling the yearning ones to show the way. I am calling for those whose whole being is faint for God to once again lead the people of God. 
And the Lord says this, the enemy put a forgetfulness over you and you had forgotten your role in the nations. And the Lord says, now you are going to remember what manner of man and woman you are together. And the Lord says, I'm going to put back in you the ability to enjoy me and to desire me with fresh zeal. And just like Chad had brought to Mercia, uh, or Mercia that sense of of zealous, passionate desire, the Lord says, it will remark you and redefine you. The lost joy in God will come back and the reality of God will mark you afresh. An enjoyable desire for him will be known in this house. And I saw a leadership team arise around you here who were led by their hunger for God and their enjoyment of him. I saw an entire leadership team and then your early adopters, your key members here, marked by a fresh, continual awe and wonder of the sheer magnitude of eternity, marked in continual awe and wonder that the word became flesh and dwelt amongst us, marked by a continual awe and wonder of God who saved us seated in heavenly places and the Lord says here you are now being commissioned this day to go on a new pilgrimage <sighs> to bear the burden of what he is asking you now this is a more personal thing you know we're fighting for a new building in Scotland. And sometimes when I see the keys in my hand of it, the weight of what that is, of premises and building and all that it entails, so you will understand this, almost burns me alive in the wrong sense, in that that's too heavy. And I'm dealing with God very personally on that. You know, how do I, what do I do, God, to be able to bear the weight of the word, to bear the weight of the responsibility individually as a leader. And it is that sense of my strength is in you, this is Psalm 84, and I've set my heart on a pilgrimage to say again, whatever the cost, whatever the cutting, whatever the price, I am up for that to be able to lead in the way Scotland needs and the way you need to lead for England. And that sense of faith, delighting God without faith, it's impossible to please God. But I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. The verse we all teach our children, you know, without faith it's impossible to please God and I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Uh, we, we almost relegate those to kiddie verses. But that sense of, I can do all things. And that speaks to your fear. And that speaks to the enemy. And that speaks to your apprehension. And that speaks to lack. And it speaks to pressure. And it speaks to attack. And it speaks to misunderstanding, which can take you out. But when you're able to say, I can do all things, through Christ who strengthens me, or Christ has made me strong because I've set my heart on this pilgrimage, suddenly your capacity to bear this leadership call increases um, uh, beyond anything that you have right now. And I know that as, as prophets, there are sometimes very often the fact that we put onto people big mantles and you can easily be overwhelmed by the size of the mantle God will put on you. But God is saying, if you can keep the verse, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me as your core verse in this next season. God will give you the movement that will move with force, says the Lord, 
versus any organization that you can structure with your own hands. For the Lord says, as the apostolic grace comes, I am making you in, in this day, to a movement, says the Lord. And the Lord says, anything that you measure as shallow waters will go as you come in to your deepest days of his presence. Now, I mean, preaching um, a fair bit uh, last Sunday in, in um, wherever it was, Dallas, and um, to some of our own leaders at a leader's retreat about it being the season of cutting. And cutting in the circumcision cutting, cutting in the uh, three ways. First with the big scythe, and cutting away uh, everything that blocks the future, these big movements of nothing's going to, you know, you know the big decrees we like to write, nothing's going to stand in the way, everything of the enemy is going to fall, you know, that real radical side decrees that clear the, 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 the forward uh, place of occupation. But I've also been seeing two other things. I've been mean, seeing a small dagger that is much more of a, what do I need to cut off my life? And then the, the more standard William Wallace type sword, which is where do I need to cut um, some covenants? And where do, co covenants in a good way and covenants that are wrong? And how do I then reposition people? So we're using three sorts of sword in this moment. The scythe to clear the way, the dagger of our own right cutting, like circumcision, and then the cutting of the repositioning of relationships. That's where we are right now. Now, let me just say this. Is that about holiness? Yes. And some of you go, right, if I take a little bit of a, a, a dagger, what I might do is I might not spend a lot on my phone. I'll cut that thing that might hinder me going through the narrow gate. You and I like the thoughts about becoming more holy, don't we? Well, I'll stop that or I'll change. No. Just no. Understand what that... Cut, no, be holy, please. Be holy as he is holy. But that's not what I'm talking about. So way over here is your future self. This is who God has called you to be. This is your destination where you have pushed to the very edge of your anointing. Because you're all anointed, yes? You're not empty-headed or empty-handed. So as a prophet, I have this sense of my own future as you individually will have too. If I push to the edge of my call, what might that look like? If I'm fully in all that God has given me already. See, the danger is we then want what somebody else has got or somebody else's, you know, anointing. Rather than saying, I already have an anointing. What is the fullness if I push it to the, not the dodgy edge where you fall off, but the fullness. So for a prophet, that future self is all about the decrees that change the shape of nations, the instantaneous um, pulling down of principalities and powers. You're pushing as a prophet into a sort of stewarding of revelation that isn't commentary or just a nice massage. Yep. So, but that's pertinent to me. What that does is that future self turns and it judges where you are right now. And it speaks to today. And it speaks to who you are and how you are. And that future says, if you want the fullness of who you're supposed to become, you've got to get braver right here, right now. You've got to take that small knife and say, that backward thinking that cautious risk, rather than risk taking, that thing that I'm quite comfortable with, I will cut it off me. That's what I mean by circumcision. In other words, you don't lose something you have in terms of I will give my money, they'll do that as well. In cutting in this season, you lose something you are. That circumcision. I lose even 
how I think about myself, I lose even an identity that I have worked for, that I might not squander my future self that God has now given us a vision of, of who we, you, are to become for the sake of England. And that means that when we move to an altar call in a minute, it is all about how brave are you to go again in some wild days of the shifting of an entire identity of a nation. You don't just hear this and drop it. Uh, probably the most um, effective nation. Do we have any Nigerians in the house? Yes. I love that nation. What I understand about Nigeria is when I'm there, they are the most apostolic people I've ever met. It's just instinctive. And they have strategized the word of the Lord before I'm even out door after lunch. Not that I can stomach the lunch. But I'm not a spicy queen at all. Anyway, sorry if I offend you. It's not meant to be. We honor Jolof Rice. Just not inside me. So... <laughs> The point of it is, they have gripped the word, they have strategized the word, they have warfared with the word, they have risked all for the word in their strategy before I'm even out the door. And so revelation to the Nigerians is not information, it's a war strategy. Yeah. And they almost immediately, by chewing on it, writing it like going through it, are certain to become their future selves because they are brave enough in the minute, in the moment, to give a bigger yes to the wildness of the call of God. Now when we talk about being spirit filled, which is positive, it's, I don't actually think it's true that you leak. I just don't get that. I, I, I don't know where, there's just no, nowhere, nowhere a biblical concept. You do understand that. It doesn't say you lose the spirit or you get less of the spirit or you leak. Why did we got that as some kind of terrifying thought to people? You've got to come again because you got pathetic. No, 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 no. Spirit filledness. Uh, in Acts 5, 10, 15, 20, which are 5, 10, 15, 20 days after uh, Pentecost, that when you come again to get filled, you're actually doing an increase of your capacity to hold more of him. It's not about re-getting something you lost. So when we come to be filled by the Spirit of God, God is saying, I want to increase your capacity for the bigger risk, the bigger dream, the bigger leap, the bigger jump, because you've got more of me to give me the big yes. So, do you want to stand to your feet? I only got halfway through my notes. It's fine. We'll catch them tonight. <laughs> Father, we are in awe of all that you are. And the mantles and the favor you want to put on this house. And Father, right now, we ask for a level of bravery to lead in the nation. And a level of courage to go again. And a level of risk taking to descend. Why you're coming because we don't just do nebulous 
altar calls. It's about bravery. It's about bravery. It's about bravery and risk. And some of the senior leaders need to push your way and stand behind these amazing husband and wife teams. If you're a senior leader, you need to demonstrate that you're with them by even laying hands on their shoulders. You need to get behind them because these guys are about to do some things that are gonna make your natural toe, toes curl, but your spiritual hearts leap. And so this is even the commissioning of, of a brave leadership team and a brave church. And if you're part of the church and you're all in for this conference members, just you can come to either side. But the members of the church then lay hands on the back of the leaders who are laying hands on the back of your senior team. Come on, church members. Let's form in, uh, in the natural an arrow shape. And, and I really feel as you form this spiritual, um, you form this physical uh, pattern, you're going to form it in the spirit too. It's really important if your leaders in place, if your church members come in behind, hands on, and you'll see that it funnels out wider, which is totally appropriate. If you're conference attendees, you're going to get something too, but I'm going to just bless these guys first. In the name of Jesus, as you stand in the natural, in this arrow of brave agreement, so I lose that ability in the spirit that you will hop, skip, and jump with joy and extreme risk and strategy taking the new thing God wants you to become. And right now, because the shape is formed, I lose to you the blue and the scrolls and just like we see in scripture the prophets eat the scroll and have understanding of what needs to happen now I loose the scrolls to you that wisdom and understanding and revelation is yours it's yours it's yours it's yours no longer will you not know no longer will you be unclear and this house is forming an arrow again for the sake of England, for the sake of England, Trevor, for the sake of England, God repositions you, God remantles you, God recrimes you, and though you cast your crown at his feet, he re-establishes authority in you for the nation, and your house will push you forward by agreement, and to the rest of you, to the left and the right, we know I just open, open your hands up, put yourself in a, re a receptive posture, my friends, okay? I just bravely encourage, come on, let it rise, 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 let it rise. Let the bravery and the courage come forth. Let the bravery and the courage and the risk to kill what needs killed and to begin what needs begin, begun, start to emerge in you right now. Be envisioned, be envisioned. I actually feel like a, there's a slight issue. So if I lay my hands on you, I release a revelation. It's the mantle of revelation. It's the mantle of perception. Come on, let the, let the revelators awake. Let the revelators awake in this place. Come see, come see, come see, come see, come see. Come see. Come see. So I speak to the hindrances to the left and to the right of you, to that spirit of intimidation that came in recent months. And I say, you are bound and pushed back. And any Sambalat and Tobias spirit that wants to come and intimidate these people, I say, you allowed anymore in the mighty name of Jesus. We go to the place that we read of in scripture where lions' mouths were clamped shut. And I say that over this house, that intimidation, belittling spirit, the mouth of that is closed and cannot speak again. Let the new movement arise. Let the new movement arise. Goodness, actually, that's really important. Movement, movement, it's a movement man. 
mantle. It's a movement mantle. It's a movement mantle. It's a movement mantle, says the Lord. It's a movement mantle. It's not church. It's not organizational mantles. It's a movement mantle. And the Lord says, sons and daughters, will you even create a space churches to join your movement there is an ability the Lord says to make immediate connections with other church leaders who will tuck into this house tithe to this house and become a broader arrow across the nation and I see key places in uh, uh, in Europe that are going to come into connection and alignment with this movement of the Father and of dealing with identity and poverty as national solutions. I, North Italy is absolutely there, and summer in France is there as well. There's deep, deep connections that the Lord is saying you're even going to need to understand how to translate sermons in, and, and teaching notes in the coming days because I'm going to give you a movement. I'm going to give you a European movement. For the Lord says, it's not just in England that the Father Heart message, oh dear, got destroyed. He says, it's the resuscitation of a continent in the love of God. And the Lord says, there's an even um, evangelistic movement that is not holding ground in Europe. I'm not sure who that is. But the Lord says there's an eva, uh, evan, uh, evan, uh, evangelism movement that's not holding ground because it has no idea of the Father's love. And the Lord says as you bring the Father's love, you will actually be ones who release the evangelists into fruitfulness rather than always into perpetual battle planning, says the Lord. Well, I bless you. Give somebody a hug and say it's time for you to take a new risk.
finances into place for the backing of the word of the Lord coming to pass, not because you pay to make prophecy happen, that's not what I'm talking about, but because you show your serious intent that the word of the Lord matters. Does that make sense? So I'm going to get you to come and give again. If you need envelopes, I'm sure the team will help. This is really quite a sober thing. But I'm going to move these baskets um, quite close together because we're going to come into something of agreement. I'm going to say, God, come and heal England's identity. God, it matters. It matters. It matters. Come and heal England's identity. God, you've got my all. You've got my big yes. You've even got my wealth. England's identity matters. This house is called to be a leader again of the Father Heart message and the decapitation of poverty. It matters. It matters. It matters. And we say that this anchors in the ground and that it brings forth much fruit and we don't just look at this moment as, well, that was nice. But we say, it matters. It matters.